Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. Football is over. Baseball season begins. Pitchers and catchers are reporting the sound of the bat and the smell of fucking no baseball still. Welcome to Talking Baseball, brought to you by Seat Geek. My name is Jimmy, and we got Trevor coming to you from California, and producer BBD behind the dish. No Jake, as he went oh skiing over the weekend in Utah and got lost. Missant. What happened? Your audio is crazy right now. Why does it do that? I wish I knew. But it happens every time we start, right? Yeah, but not on the It's show. bad. Just when we do rendezvous? Is it better now? No. <laughs> Again, there's something every time we bring in a guest remotely and live stream it that it just changes as soon as we like actually go live. But yeah, just to reiterate, because I know people uh, can't stand this and you're right not to be able to stand it. We uh, have, I think we hired a company to... Uh, Basically, every single piece of equipment that got installed needs to come out and re-put up because <laughs> the people that we hired to set up our studio just didn't do it properly. And it's very frustrating. That said, today it went loud instead of dead quiet, quiet which yeah. is probably the easier adjustment on, their, on the audience end, but frustrating anyway. It's you guys go are back, still like so. not great for me. I think the aud- the audience is saying we're good in the chat, but to me, you guys are still like crazy. I don't know, but <laughs> we can we can roll, bro. Can, lower can, lower your, your headphones. Anyway, I can barely understand what you're saying. To be honest, with you. refresh. Go go uh, re- refresh your browser and see if that works. I'll come back. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Apologize, guys. <laughs> Nothing makes me more upset nor BBD than these these issues. We are oh, there actually you are. we're good. The entire studio is being run off of Joe's McFly's gaming computer because the computers that the people set up for us that we tried to use the first day we opened the studio are you just you can't even like do anything on them at all. Like BBD can't even really take notes on them, and uh, they're a little better now. So like the the only reason. Well, the only reason we can even exist right now in this studio is because Joe's McFly had a gaming PC that we built for JM Gaming, and we had to steal it to run this. And the other studio still don't work, so it's a it's a good way to make me upset right away. No, Sucks. we're not upset, bro. No, it we're sucks for upset. the audience, man, because they just. I know you're right about that. And on like an algorithm standpoint, because it happens like the first minute of the show, and that's tough because then people they've never seen before. Yeah, it's brutal. But we can't rush into fixing it. We have to hire like top of the line professional, like the people that set up South Seaport at ESPN crew to like need them do it. So it's not going to be fixed tomorrow. So we'll just figure it out. Anyway, Jake's not here. He's skiing in Utah. Trev was at the Super Bowl last night, partied because he won it afterwards so we got a text from trev saying we're that he's dead so i'm alive trev's dead bbd's here baseball's dead that's the update welcome yeah, to the show it's basically. brought to you by DraftKings. my bet almost hit trev it's brought to you by seat geek we're in the DraftKings studio DraftKings. i put a hundred dollars down that it would go to overtime and if the Bengals just kicked a field goal at the end there we were like mm. you know a possibility away and i was gonna brag about that real Loud, but now football's over, so it's time to turn your attention to the NBA, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. $150 in free bets if you bet just $1 on any team. How about that? I have an NBA question for you, Trev, as well after this. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code JOHNBOY. Bet just $1 on any NBA team. Get $150 in free bets if they win. That's promo code JOHNBOY. DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. It's a short one. It's not the really long disclaimer, but I'll still get timed for it anyway. 
Must be 21 plus and physically present in New York. Eligibility restrictions apply. Minimum $5 deposit. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for full details. Gambling prom call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. Uh, Trev, you found a way to make every championship team into your win, which is amazing. It's just incredible. The Braves win and, and you have a champagne celebration. The Rams win the Super Bowl and you're in the quarterback suite and then partying with them afterwards. So, like, who's your NBA team? Who's your closest connection? How is the NBA and the NF- NHL champions going to be connected to you? You know, I got to, like, get into that. I've now, yeah, two sports, all mine, no doubt about it. The NBA and NHL, I have to kind of figure it out. I'm obviously a Laker fan. The NHL, I think that's going to be, like, your thing. Like, you're more of a hockey guy than I am. Like, that's, that's LA kind of is... close, but not... Okay. <laughs> that means I don't know, that means I don't know at, if I'm that celebrating. That means you're at zero out of 100, and I'm at five. Yeah, I'm going yeah. to a game tomorrow. I, I night. think, I think I gotta like stop when I'm ahead, bro. Like baseball champion, football champion. I mean, it was last night was like, like wild. Like if if you're a sports fan, which I am, like being and seeing all that, and then being around everyone was like honestly. I told a couple of the guys last night, I was like, it's inspiring to see them fulfill like a prophecy almost like they went all in the Rams went all in this year. And like, if they didn't make it to the super bowl, uh, it was a disaster. And then you get to the super bowl. You, you might as well win it. And my boy, Matthew, man, just like coming through, um, I was hanging with Dan Orslowski a little bit yesterday. And he, if you want to like hear about football, uh, listen to that guy talk about like what the Rams did. Um, he's, he's been spot on with them all year. It was fucking, it was incredible. Who did you, what was your interaction with Stafford? Like after, you know, you see him for the first time or did you see him after the game? I did. I saw, I saw him, uh, like at the after party. Yeah. And he, he was just in a good mood, but he's always so even keeled and it's like level headed. His post game so... interview was the, like the chillest winning quarterback, of the Super Bowl ever. That's how he is. And I just think, you know, you spend a lot of time in one city and it doesn't work out. And then you come to LA and there's so, there's so much expectation for you. He was the perfect guy for it because of like how level headed he was a bunch of fourth quarter comebacks. I mean, now he just gets to sit back and he's a Super Bowl champion forever. He's a hall of famer. Like, it's crazy, man. Like, it couldn't couldn't have happened to a better guy. Like, I know I, I tell people to root for guys on this show a lot in different sports. Like, Matthew's one of them, man. Like, you got to get behind this guy because he's he's just a good dude. And the whole team is like that. Like him and Cooper and and Whitworth. Like they're kind of like boys, and they're all hanging out together. Where they were all there last night, and they're just all three of them are just like excellent people. So I enjoy being around that. Well, yes. They work their ass <clears throat> off, and it. They won. Was it? Were you upset that your uh, baseball today co-host Chris Rose didn't, you know, talk about you and the when he interviewed him after the game? No, people need to stop talking about me. I'm going to go into hiding, bro. Like I don't need to be talked about anymore. Dude, everywhere okay. you go, something happens. I know, Good. I know. People, man. teams are going to start recruiting you. Uh, Fayou in the chat said, um, you know, Co Tuck and the Suns. It might be that, huh? Mm-hmm. Hey, next year, speaking of Coach, I think next year the Super Bowl is in, in Phoenix. So yeah. we might have to make a run out there. We'll hang out with Coach Tuck. Well, we're going in a month. Oh, man. It was supposed to be our spring training trip. Now it's just called our Arizona trip. It is. It's just we had to drop the spring training. So now it's just Arizona I, trip. How do I sound right now? Like, Do I Horse. sound like just an absolute? You sound like you had a great time. Okay. Yeah. I was screaming, man. I was sound, cheering. You sound like a champion, to be honest. For real, James and BBD, let me tell you guys something. Chat, I started at like 8.15 in the morning yesterday, and I went till 3 o'clock in the morning. So, like, it was a long day, bro. Dude, I, <laughs> I, went st- hard. I started at 7 a.m. You know, I took my nephew uh, <laughs> sledding. So, at, we are 8 a.m. at the sledding hill. Okay. <sighs> He went you guys down. Got snow out there? Yeah, it was fifty. It was fifty-five and sunny Friday, and then uh, woke up Saturday to uh, like six inches of snow in my backyard. Oh, it snowed that much here. Yeah, I got a lot of snow. Um, 
All right. So baseball is still in a terrible spot. It's, I mean, Valentine's Day to me, I, I think of pitchers and catchers. And then you get my favorite content from spring training and pitchers and catchers is uh, the beat reporters like holding their phone camera through the netting of a guy's bullpen and be like Scherzer's first bullpen as a Met. And it's just like him just like throwing at 50%. 60%. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I honestly, I eat it up. And then you hear that first video of uh, like a good crack of the bat. And that usually goes viral on Twitter in the baseball community. And it's like, oh, that sound. And uh, yeah, we should be getting those. But we might be getting them from private workouts. Who knows? We had Manfred speak. We had another meeting between the two. And um, mm-hmm. we have kind of like a timeline set. Because Manfred said that spring training is still not going to be missed. And I think like the big the big thing for me, and we can get into the nitty gritty, but the big takeaway for me was that each side kind of is agreeing upon right now or talking about rumor, rumor at least, the uh, like when can they start? Like, what's the latest date before they miss games? Because I think MLB told the players, like, this is the latest date before we think we can miss games. So we want to get it We want to get it done by here. And then MLB, the players were going to respond and say, no, we think it's this date. I don't know if they did respond. But at least they're putting that, like, what Jake's been asking for. And, and is that, like, deadline? Yeah. Hopefully that's something. I, you know, I, when Manfred said we need three to four weeks um, of spring training to get ready, I think we need to err on the side of caution and go four weeks. Um, they have the data out there for a shortened spring training and what it brought as far as injuries, and it's not good. So I think, you know, we're looking at four weeks. That's the bottom line. And that's from ratified CBA and then a week or two or three days to get everyone out there we're not even close to that yet. Like we're missing games, bro. Like we're missing games. And there's, I don't think there's any way around it. Uh, We've not, we MLB has dragged their feet so much here. And, you know, Rob Manford calling it disastrous. If they were to miss regular season games, it is, if it's disastrous, which it is, then you got to move faster. The problem is both these sides don't want to give in. Neither side does. Yeah, man. I, I, and, and the fans are going to suffer because of it. And I know, look, I'm not saying the players should be, you know, um, negotiating against themselves. Uh, MLB needs to, you know, maybe bridge the gap a little bit more, like 100%. That's what you want. And there's only a few things. I, we talked about this before the show, James. Like, this isn't as contentious as, like, 94. That's what I was like, going to say. They can make a deal. Like, here, here's what I think needs to happen. We need the penalties on the competitive balance tax to drop. We need the competitive balance threshold, whatever the freak is called. We need that to rise and we need the penalties to drop because it's acting as a soft cap. Everyone needs, everyone knows that that's been the one area where they ba- they basically haven't moved. They don't want to move that. I think if you did minimum, uh, salary bump it up a little bit cbt fix the thresholds there ain't much more i know i was doing a lot of reading about it and and i forget who who wrote it and i i didn't read like deep deep in into the 94 one but it was someone saying that the last two strikes was it 80 and 84 and 94 85 81 81, when they did the split season think so and 94 they're saying like what they're fighting over now is so small in comparison but i didn't dive deep into what they were fighting over then and i i I don't have it on top of my brain so maybe i shouldn't be talking at least i'll be honest about that i don't know what i'm talking about a little bit there but um that was a sentiment that like what they're like pretty close right now and man i i i i really Fear they both want to miss games. Like, I think that... Here's what I think. I think the leaders of 
MLB and I, whatever owners are most vocal uh, or Manfred, if it's him, it's probably not. And then the MLB PA, um, whoever's most vocal, I think both of them are in a contest to see who will break. And I hope they're doing that in the best interest of their groups. Like, I hope all the players are on board. And obviously, the players all say they're on board because if they don't, that's like a huge problem. And same with the owners. They have to be galvanized publicly. But I hope that because both sides to me seem like they want to miss games because they want to win the pissing contest. Otherwise, they'd be negotiating every day. They'd just be meeting every day. It's just so, so simple to me. Like, you just would be meeting every day. And you would be saying, this point, let's finish this point. And then you'd go, okay, next one. Let's finish this one. And you'd just be nine to five with separate wings for, you know, to adjourn and then go talk amongst themselves and then come back. But, you know, the league started off by taking 40 days to send over a proposal. And then and then taking forever. But I, I've said it from the start, I think they both want to prove that they will miss games. And I hope everyone on both sides, like all the owners and then all the players, like are in agreement with that. And it's not just a Tony Clark, Rob Manfred pissing contest because I've heard some rumblings that that's kind of what it is. I know players don't want to miss games, bro. I know that for a fact. Obviously, look, there we talk about this quite a bit on this show. It's a small window for these dudes. And, you know, this is their opportunity to make money. They've worked a long time to get to this point. And, you know, you miss games. You miss out on some of your salary. That's just the bottom line. They want to they want to play. And you're right, dude. I I want I wanted it to get to a point where they met so much that they got sick of each other. And then you'd be like, okay, at least they tried. And right now, I mean, you're right. MLB 40 something days between offers, like they're dragging their feet like crazy. I don't know what the players can do. You can't just say it. You, you got to have like, you got to have that dialogue. And I just don't think it's there between the two sides. Uh, So we'll see, look, we'll see what, the players come back if they're going to make a proposal. I mean, they have to. You can't just not make a proposal. You you talk to MLB and say, where's our proposal? They have to counter this, and they will. And I'm curious to see if it moves the needle at all because it seems like every single offer that MLB has made is pretty, like, it's small. Very small, small steps. Like, yeah. We're going to get there. There's no doubt in my mind we're going to get there. Um, it's just how long is it going to take? And, you know, like... Did you see, dude, did you see the Manfred stuff about saying it's not, like, profitable? Or it's, like, a big Yeah, I risk? did see that. It's, I mean, like, guy needs to fucking relax with that. How does, dude. <laughs> Just the public how many, raw How many numbers. teams gone for sale? Dude, I mean, for, like anyone that doesn't, for anyone that doesn't know, I wonder if I can find, like, his actual comment. He said that the stock, the stock market is a better investment than a baseball team. Um, it's not well, but dude, it's like it's like such a bold face, like l- not like a lie, and trying trying to get sympathy for owners. Like, dude, if if you don't want to own a baseball team, sell it. They they yeah, go for a a, they go for a ton of money, and it and you and it's just like wrong. Like everyone was just skewing skewing it. Like that's wrong with it. I I feel like, dude, every time Manfred talks, he says something where you're like, why do they let this guy talk? (laughs) Like, this is, this is the representation of the owners. This is who they think like does well. Like every time he's so stupid. Um, He said, if you look at a purchase price of franchises, the cash that's put in during the period of the ownership and then what they sold for historically return on those investments is below what you get in the stock market. it's like, I mean, if you just like, like, you know, look at it's so stupid because all these owners have other businesses and surely owning a major uh, league baseball team 
helps other businesses in some way. And um, there's a competitiveness. There's the allure of owning a major sports team. And if your team wins and you are good at it, like any business, there's a huge return. Even if you're not winning, there's still a return. It's just like patent, like just false and a crazy statement. Manfred's it's terrible e- at talking. It's an easily disproven statement, and it got disproven. Is that a word? Did I just make up a word? I don't even know. I think you're good. Okay, you thank you. It. You're my word guy, BBD. He's you my math that? guy. Yeah, we found that out. I mean, look, it's obviously profitable to own a Major League Baseball team. And, like, to go into the specifics of it, we don't need to. There's auxiliary things that happen. You're getting taxpayer-funded stadiums. There is James. We we're in we're in the space now, bro. Everyone wants content. Everyone is after entertainment. And guess what? You got entertainment. There's all these streaming services coming into play. It's very profitable to own a major league baseball team. If it wasn't, these guys wouldn't do it. They have a legalized monopoly. Like this is their thing. Teams don't come up for sale. If it wasn't profitable, they'd be for sale. Yeah, I can't hear that shit, bro. I can't hear it at all. We got, I don't know. And the, the, the thing is, James, they're okay with Manfred sounding like this because like it, all the hate just goes to him. Mm-hmm. That's the point. That's the point of him, basically. And which is crazy because if you say you're the commissioner of baseball, my feeling is the number one thing you should do is protect the sport. And that's not the number one thing a commissioner, our commissioner does. He protects the owner's interest, number one. And I don't know where and disrespect protecting this. I don't know where protecting the sport lies on his rankings. It ain't one. It sure as shit probably is not two either. It might not even be on the list. Yeah. Uh, it's as, tough, man. As for like some of the proposals that actually, uh, you know, the some of the stuff that were in the proposal. Let's see. They made one. Uh, MLB offered one change that I think is actually good. Uh, okay. and, and a step in the right direction. The problem is MLBPA is like suspect about it. Cause they're like, well, <laughs> what does this cost us on the other end? If we give it to you here, which is like the whole reason why no, no thing gets anywhere, but MLB, uh, made a change, uh, to mitigate service time manipulation. The first thing we talked about was them just getting, uh, draft picks if they don't manipulate it, which I hope doesn't happen. Cause that's ridiculous. We've talked about that. Now they're trying to limit the number of times a player can be optioned during a season. If you're unfamiliar with this, um, players have three options. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, th- three option years. Three option years. So you have three seasons in which you can be sent up and down. If you only get sent up and down once, that uses up an option. In, in this yeah. season. If if you as a player get sent up and down every two weeks, still just one option. That's all it costs you. Um, and you see a lot of teams do this, especially with the bullpen. Just, you know, bus rides back and forth. Um, so the, so um, they're trying to limit the amount of times a player with options can be shuttled between majors and minors in a season. It's been unlimited, uh, I believe. Yes. The Rays recalled and demoted Luis Head 12 times last season. So 12 times <laughs> he got called up and demoted. That's, that's crazy, bro. That's insane. And um, It's insane. And it's a way to fuck with service time because when he's not on the big league roster, those days don't go towards his service time. So he p- could have pitched in, uh, you know, if he was a starter. I don't know. Is he a starter? I'm not familiar with Luis Head. I don't know, Rays do some weird stuff with their pitchers, too, so... So, but, okay, this is how fucked up this system can be. If he's a starter, he can start 12 games and only get 12 days of service time because they just send him down the day after and bring him up the the day of, Uh, whereas 12 games is usually probably, what, 10 weeks? Well, well, it's 60 days. Yeah, 60 days, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is 60 days of service time if you're part of the rotation instead of 12. So it's a really messed up way to fuck with pitchers, especially bullpen players. So MLB said, we will put a limit on this, and they're suggesting five. 
which honestly That's still a lot, a lot, but I thought they would start at like 10 or like eight because it, cause it's still a lot, but that's still a lot. That means, you know, five out of the six months you can be sent up and down really. Um, but that's great that they're at least giving a limit. Like th- it needs a limit. It needs a cap. It's going to help with fans getting to know players better and not the constant shuttle. It's going to help with those players lives for the season. It's going to help with accruing more service time, which gets you to arbitration quicker, which gets you to free agency quicker. Uh, the, the PA responded and they said that we want four, which I think is funny. I think if you counter, you have to counter at three. So you can meet at four. I, I just, I don't understand what countering at four does. Uh, Cause it's just going to be five now. Um, but I, I have some, I have some thoughts on this. Like five is still too many to be honest. Five. I mean, I bet if we went through all, the whole league, the gu- amount of guys that I got option more than five times is, is not that many. I could be talking crazy right now but in my experience i mean you get option five times which i did one year i got option five times i think 2011 or something damn it's a lot so like them saying okay we'll do it to five their strings attached so like that's why the, the pa is like what like what like they're hesitant about it because yeah we'll give you this which is really not giving you much it, it it sounds like we're making progress towards something, but like I said, like how many guys actually get off option more than five times? Not that many. And then we're going to add strings to it. Uh, it's do it by, do, do it by position. If you need to. It's, it's interesting because it's not interesting. It sucks the way it's done. Now you can be a relief pitcher and you can go pitch three innings and, and like save your, the rest of your bullpen, the pitching staff, you do your job that they pay you to do. And because you did your job, you can't pitch the next day. You threw too many pitches. So what do they do? They option you. They send you back to the minor leagues. So you get no service time. You don't make big league salary. You have a split contract. So like you're making minor league salary, but you just did your job. You that's the most frustrating part about all this is how they're doing that. And if you notice Look at all the AAA teams. They're trying to bring him as close to the parent club as possible so they can basically have a shuttle bus to and from AAA. The guy that got optioned 12 times, Durham is not anywhere near Tampa. <laughs> like, that's, that's crazy, dude. Like, packing your bags up, moving back and forth 12 times. And, you know, if you're getting called up to the big leagues 12 times, you're a big leaguer, bro. Like, you can play in the show. You're doing your shit. What team is it that that actually double A was where they kept their shuttle guys? Because it was at the Mets when they had Las Vegas. Closer? Yeah. Think about that. You're playing in double A instead of triple A. Because it's easier to fuck with your service time and like have you just go back and forth a lot. Yeah, I I do not like that whole thing. Oh, let's limit it to five. Oh, gee, thanks, bro. You can only option me five times this year, and then you want something because because of that. Like, excuse my language, but fuck out of here, bro. Luis Heel for the Yankees got called up. He pitched in six games, started six games. You know which would be like 30 days of service time usually. I think he got like 10 because he was also a COVID replacement. I think his first three starts, Trev, he had zero service time because the COVID replacement didn't count. Oh. I, if, I'm re, if I know how to read the service time count on baseball reference, he got 33 days. Because I know if you get sent down and called up before like the 10-day yes, rule, 10 days, you yeah. get those days back. So I'm guessing that happened at least once or twice. But how does it, what is it? Cause it says he has what? Zero point. I think that it zero, that first zero is years. And then days is there. Yeah. This is what the three digit number is after the decimal. So 15 I will days. shout out the Rays. The, the Rays did that with me. They set me down and called me back up within the 10 days. I didn't lose any service time. There is that stipulation. So it says he has 15 gotta days. Got to be clear of that. 0.015. Luis Heal. I'm seeing 0.033. But on fan graphs on baseball reference. Oh, fan graphs has as 15 days, which I thought it was. 
Yeah, and in my head, I would have guessed it was closer to that than this number. Because I, I believe Luis Hill, his first three starts, he had a 15.2 innings pitched with a zero ERA, didn't allow a single run, and he didn't accrue a day of service time or something like that because it was like the COVID rules or something like that. I don't know. Because um, the replacement players didn't have the 10-day rules on them. So he got screwed. Oh, yeah, that's right. So anyway, the whole thing there that I was saying is MLB, it says they proposed this, which was like, okay, like, yes. Uh, but MLBPA countered at four, and they're weary of, like, what is this, though? They think there's unknown strings attached, according to uh, Evan Drellich's tweet, which is how, yeah. the, how the PA is responding to everything. Even if the MLB offers, like, this is like one of the very few and small things that is in the right direction. And even and then PA, whenever that does happen, they're like, okay, hold up. What's the trick? <laughs> I mean, you kind of got to look at it that way because they, you know, in the last CBA that I was part of, they slid some things in there and you got to be careful. Things that seem like nothing yeah, can be something big. And that leads us to like the luxury tax. And, I think Ty Yellen put out a tweet about this. It was it was a it was a pitch or something or something on Twitter. He was saying you can you can raise like the threshold as much as you want, but if the penalties are gonna be increased, like that's that's what causes all these teams to stop and basically use it as a cap. So like, you can raise the threshold, but if the penalties are getting harsher, like that doesn't mean anything. Like the penalties have to come down and you have to raise the threshold. That's all players want. I don't think that's a big ass, to be honest with you. Like that's not a big ass. We're asking you, the MLB, to not penalize yourself for spending money on good players. Like when think about that. We're we're asking you to come to the negotiating table. Don't cost yourself a bunch of money trying to win can you guys do that for us and mlb is like nah fuck it like we're gonna penalize the shit out of ourselves that's cool like what <laughs> like how does that make sense at all yeah uh -uh. the plan was to have a limit of 214 million for 2022 through 2024 increasing to 216 and then in 2025 220 uh mlb's latest proposal retained the 214 number for 22 and 2023 20 what? They and bumped it up a couple mil. <laughs> they bumped it up $2 million? A couple mil, bro. It's... Oh. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, bro. Because you know I'm a positive guy. People say that about me. But this... I'm getting... I'm getting bad vibes. Yeah, I don't want to miss baseball. I hung out with a lot of ball players last night, some prominent MFers. Nobody wants to miss baseball. They want to play. Fans want to play. I'm not so sure MLB wants to play. I mean, they have to. Like, they got to make money too. I my only so thing is doing? if they miss games, then they, they it's like I don't think they can miss less than two months. Because once you when, miss games, then you need to do prorated salaries and calculate the new schedule. And are you going to do a new system, new format? What are you going to do? And then it's going to take forever to do that. And then you got spring training. Like if they, and I think that's what they're saying. And uh, they know that. Like that's why they're trying to hit these deadlines. But I think both sides want to miss games. It's. As soon as we get to that point, too, James, I feel like the heels are going to start to get dug in, dude. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's like, like once you it's miss, like once they go to battle, like once the once they're in no season, then because right now the the players you know are fighting for um, themselves and the next group of players, right? The PA. Yes. What yes. and. There's there's going to be some sentiment towards like, hey, I love the next group of players, but I kind of got to make some money right now. I got three years left in my window, blah, 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 blah. And maybe that's why they come to an agreement here and, and they do the next CBA in three or four years, whenever it is. But if it goes to the season hasn't started on time, I think to use the words you just said, I think the, the MLBPA says we're digging in then 
and we are getting everything we want. And then, and then, then it's bad, big bad. James, I don't like that. I don't like even putting that out there, but it's, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know. Like what's it, the olive branch? Is that a thing, right? That's a saying. Yeah. Extend the olive branch is what you're looking for. What's the olive branch here? Like, what is it? What's it going to be? Like, I'm, I, you know, I talk to a lot of people about this and I don't, I don't know what it is. Like, what is going to, what is going to get these negotiations done? I don't know. I'm not sure. Usually you'd have an idea like, hey, if you just give us this, we'll be good. It doesn't seem that way. It seems like we're far apart in like three or four like major areas here. And like we said, man, you get into that season, there's no games. It's going to get contentious, more contentious than it already is. And we got to sit here and talk about it instead of talking about TPPs and like going over teams, which is all the shit we should be doing now. I got to make a World Series prediction. I got to know all the rosters. Hmm. James, we still got we still got free agents, like 100 people that need jobs. Like, it's crazy. We're – I'm getting upset talking about it right yeah. now. I'm trying not to be like I'm, my blood is kind of boiling. I'm trying to have a chill day. Like I just won the Super Bowl last night, you know, like yeah. it's my day to rest and recover, but here I am, I'm getting hot and yeah. I'm trying to find the, the olive branch Yeah, and I can't find it. Yeah. The problems are, are growing, would you say? And they need to, to be trimmed up, you know, and nothing better to use yes. than lawnmower 4.0 to clean it up, get rid of the problems. Cause the longer we go, the longer the problems get. And they look bad, and no one wants to play with you. People like being my, played with. In my experience, the longer you wait, the harder it is. Like, you just yeah. kind of got to keep going. Oh, keep and then going. you get so to like, a point of just, like, complacency where you're just like, fuck it, ooh. whatever, I'm gross. And that's uh, just not the best way to go about it. That's why Manscaped has the Lawnmower 4.0. They have the ultimate package and includes a lot of stuff as well as Lawnmower and 4 million men worldwide trust Manscaped with this. You can get 20% off plus free shipping with the code TALKIN at manscaped.com. 20% off plus free shipping with code TALKIN at manscaped.com. 20% off plus free shipping with code TALKIN at manscaped.com. Hey, you know what I love? Yes. From Manscaped? I, the lawnmower is great, and I use that. But for me and my Roman nose, mm -hmm. like, I get hair in there. The nose hair trimmer is... A godsend. You can't be that dude with the nose hairs hanging out. You just can't. If you're that guy, you don't be that guy. Don't do it. Unless you're like boom. super old. No, that's the worst, dude. And the ears, all that. Like, let's go, people. Hey, I have we some news. This. I have some news it's for you. Easy I have some news for you, Trev. Okay. College baseball starts this week, this weekend. Yes. I don't know when. You're a baseball snob. And you won't watch college baseball, and that's fair, no. and I agree with you, and I, I sometimes uh, share the same sentiment. I am uh, – I think I am I might be tuning in. Guess what? Are you Jones in? I watched a lot of college softball before the Super Bowl started. I like college softball. Can, can I say – I want to talk about college softball, but you have to be honest, and um, sometimes that honesty might come across as mean. Okay. College softball is so exciting yes. because some of the defense, if you're not like a top ranked school, when I was watching a lot of not some of the defense is so atrocious that anything can happen at any time. Interesting. Uh, I was watching, I, watched, I was watching it, like Townsend college softball. Oh my God. I was watching like Townsend. I don't, I was watching a lot of college softball. Um, Man, it was like a close game. I think it was a tie game. And the catcher, the the runner on first ran. There's a runner on third. As, no, there's runners on first and second. The runner on first just kind of takes off in the middle. The catcher has her dead to rights. They back pick. But the first baseman, first base woman, instead of tagging the runner, because um, then the, both runners decide to advance, she throws it to third. They miss the ball at third. It goes into left field. So that runner rounds third and mm. scores. They throw the ball home. Um, the catcher bobbles it. Then the runner on first comes home to score. And on a back pick, there was two errors 
and two runs scored, and that was the go-ahead runs. And I'm like, holy smokes. And then, uh, yeah, there's a lot like that. It's almost impossible to get out if you hit a in, uh, ball in the infield and you're fast in college softball. That's what I was going to say, dude. I, like, when I watch college softball, I'm continually um, impressed with how infielders can even make a play because the bases are so close and, like, they hit and, like, when you're hitting, you run out the box almost before you even make contact in softball. Yeah. Like you're getting a, you're getting, we call it a jailbreak, you know, a jailbreak swing. You're getting that. And these girls, and I mean, they make incredible plays and they hammer the ball across the diamond. I, I saw a play yesterday. I think it was, I was watching the game. Uh, as a red jerseys. It was really, it was a good game. You can tell some broadcasts just have like the high home camera and they don't cut at all. And other ones are like, I kind of hunt down production when I was watching the games, but there's like, yeah, there's like 20 know, on at it. was like 20 on at a time. <laughs> the ball was hit right back to the pitcher. She grabbed it. She threw to first normal, casual, safe. Lefty batter just beat it. I'm like, Whoa, that's hard. Like how does a, how does a shortstop ever make it out? It's that's what I'm saying, dude. And I'll tell you this: softball pitchers, they're not soft like these MLB pitchers. These MLB starters, oh, I can only throw this amount of pitches. Oh, yeah. Softball, they're like, I'll throw 500 pitches. I will throw every single inning of this tournament, yeah, because I'm a savage. There was that. And we got these these freaking starters in the big leagues putting their fluffy jackets I think there on. Was a, it's cold. It's a pitcher from Oregon. Forget her name. She ate a bug. I made a video about it. Cause she like ate a bug in the dugout and you could read her lips and she was just like, I ate a bug. Oh my God, a bug just flew in my mouth. No, I did like a lip reading on it. Um, she was a star pitcher for Oregon, I think, or Texas, or she transferred back and forth and she pitched like every game. So anyway, college baseball starting. I don't have any team in college baseball. I don't have like any preference, but maybe if there's no spring training in that, I'll just start tuning in. And then I, I just, I think I'm going to have to stay around the, the nicer divisions. Cause I just, I need multiple cameras and like replays. I was watching one college softball and they just didn't have replays. And I was like, I can't, I can't be watching if there's no replays. There's no replays. (laughs) Uh, Well, I mean, this was like, I don't know. I mean, it was not, I posted one video from it because the umpire forgot to count, but there was no replays. It was pretty funny. Interesting. Is there a power conference in the softball? I'm guessing, I'm guessing people from the South. SEC, Pac-10, is it Pac-12? I don't even know. Is it Pac-12 in everything now or just football? I'd have to. I don't know, man. I might Miranda be Elish was her name. Miranda. Well, shout out, Miranda. Yeah. Yeah. I hey, sure. you know, like you ever try to hit a softball? It's like it's like trying to hit a blitz ball for the first time. You can't. Dude, I We want to invite... Um, a softball player was like on Instagram a while ago. I don't know if she listens to this or she just follows on socials. And she DM'd us or the chat like, when can I play about like back alley bats? And now that we have the warehouse, we want to do stuff. And I'm like, I, we need to get back in touch and say, absolutely, come play. Speaking of Blitzball, first game tonight, we got, I oh, you can wear that jersey. Dude, I didn't even realize you're wearing that jersey. It's sick. Yeah. I have mine. Um, I mean, these are sick and they feel good. This, you know what this is for real? A great summertime tea. Yeah. Dude, people are buying the jerseys from the Blitzball Battle. I didn't know if people would uh, pick them up or not, but they're they're being Especially bought. before games are out. Yeah. So game one people of the Blitzball Battle for 10K. Yeah, we the turnout and like the first 10 hours was good. Bef- uh, uh, Shea Station, is, I think, is the most popular. Forgotten Ride and the, Baggage are the top three. Let me get the Brew Crew fans on these jerseys. Come yeah. on, guys. Uh, Blitzball Battle for 10K. It's uh, Jake and I, Team Baggage, versus Jack and Zoe from uh, We Got Ice. Game one. Dude, Jack. If people don't know We Got Ice, uh, obviously very funny and knowledgeable about the game, but Jack gets out there on the bump. I think he was one of the better pitchers in that whole tournament. Yeah, so he's shout out, Jack. He's tough Jack to Doyle. Like, what a name. You're a tight end also, Jack. What's up, bro? Doyle. You played in the NFL? No, he's too skinny. Hey, these dudes that I was hanging out with last night are massive. Yeah. Football yeah. players are just different, dude. They're so big. I, I'm sick of hanging out with big people like Jerry Blevins, that tall alien mf'er. 
making me look all small. Hey, hey, don't kick him while he's down. His team lost. He does. Jerry. Dude. Hey, you know who else I was talking to last night? I'm going to let everyone in on just the, the night. I'm going to share it with everybody because that's who I am. Jonathan India and I were just DMing each other. Oh, hey, he gets a lot of shout outs on tonight's game. Game one of Blitzball Battle. Dude, I was texting him or DMing him. I was like, where you at? He went to a different party than I went to. I don't know if he could get into the one that I was at. No, you know, whatever. It's not that big of a deal, Jonathan. I could have got you in maybe, but maybe. sorry for your loss. You and Jerry. They oh. rooted for the wrong team. Dude, I think because of COVID or whatever, some eligibility stuff, because Miranda, I don't know how you say her last name, Ellish, is still pitching. So it's her last season. I went... I was trying to see if like what is what do people do after softball's over when they're studs? They just like do the celebrity game because there's no Olympic softball or there's gotta be some national circuit somewhere. Anyway, her most recent pick on Instagram is is pretty badass. She's got a cowboy hat on because she's the she's an Oregon State. You'd like to pick. Love it. Nike's front and center. Shout out. I like I want to see what you're talking about. <laughs> she getting a lot of love on this show but I, she was a badass pitcher I wonder if she still is but she pitched like every game we'll get her on we'll get her to the warehouse Ale- is that, wait what, what what school Oklahoma State Alabama? Sorry. Oklahoma Oklahoma State I thought there was a girl from Alabama that was like just banging looks, it out on the mound she's like the best isn't that last year looks like she transferred to Oklahoma State this year Dude. Looks That's like she went one? Indiana to Oregon to Texas to Alabama to Oklahoma State. Is that allowed? <laughs> it must be. What? She was on Texas. So that's, yeah, that's who you're thinking of. And then she was on, she was in Oregon, Texas. What the hell? How is that allowed? Anyway. And and uh, the number one cricket league starts in April. So, want to hear some fucked up? Want to hear some behind the scenes stuff? The cricket league, uh, the IPL, it's the India Premier League, and they're the number one, I think, because I think the India doesn't allow a lot of their top players to go play in other domestic leagues. But like the top Australians, New Zealand, other people will go play in the IPL. They added two new teams. Just just they added. Hilarious. Aaron said Jimmy saying this acting like he didn't go to three colleges. I went to five. So, yeah, true. Uh, I didn't play sports, though. Um, you would think, you know, you stay with your teammates, bond, chasing the same goal, blah, blah. Um, so, the IPL, wonder if MLB did this. They added two new teams to the league. And it's not a 162 game league. It's like more of just like a tournament for like two months, April to June. Um, so, each team got to keep like four players. And then every other player went to auction and they just did it on Saturday. Wow. And like, so they, every other player, every other player. Holy shit. <laughs> you laughing at that that's bad. A, it's a badass picture. It's a badass picture. It's a bad, like, I don't want to face that. That's a badass picture. I would take her so far up top, but like badass picture. Let's set it up. Miranda, come God, to the I just, warehouse. I'm eat my freaking words, aren't I? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they had a mega auction. How much would that suck? That's what I said. I was talking to those like, well, they're like, well, they do an auction every year, but usually you could keep way more people, but they only got to keep like a handful. That would, that would be brutal for fans. Like if they, if they didn't you feel bad, if you got left off, you're like, I'm not, you, I wasn't good enough to be kept. We should do a, a, if we don't get baseball, we should have an episode where we do like a, a, um, Maybe just like the AL. I don't know. I don't know how you do redraft. it. Redraft? Yeah, redraft the American League with like a fan from each team. It'd be a whole thing. But you, we'd have team. to reach out like to Nate Steele and be like, okay, you get to keep three players. Who are you keeping? And that's pretty easy for the Angels. It's what, Trout, Otano, Rend- Rendon. Or Walsh. Yeah, I guess. The, get, well, it's Trout, Otani, and then you do it. But that would suck to have to say goodbye because the fringe players – that aren't the superstars, but I've been on the team for eight years, six years are the ones you kind of have the most connection to in a way, you know, cause no one else has yeah. that connection. That's wild, man. Yeah. I want to get, I need to get into cricket. Like I'm leaving major league baseball. 
I'm a softball fan now. I'm going to get into cricket. I'm already coaching six and seven year olds. Yeah. So you're there. Maybe my baseball snob is leaving. Like maybe that, maybe that guy's gone now. Get into the, well, ooh, it's super early. I'm excited about the IPL because the start, game start at like nine 30. Uh, in the morning. We got some soccer coming on. You're too. awake at 6 30, dude. Can't. I am awake. I can't talk about all this shit. You can't man. do soccer. Baseball. What? Let's I'm, go. I'm doing bat and ball sports. So it's all, you know, in the same world softball, college baseball, <clears throat> cricket. Can I tell you guys something? And we're, we're close to the end of the show now. I think it's time I drop a bomb. Okay. Was I hanging out with Clayton Kershaw last night? Yes, I was. Where's he going? We, we almost fulfilled the prophecy. Like, we were so close to fulfilling the prophecy, bro. Lombardi trophy in one hand. I had a banger in the other hand last night. Like, we could have done it all, but, you know, we're not there yet. Do I know where Clayton Kershaw is going to play next year? I do. Whoa! Am I going to share it with people? I am not. Uh-oh. No, I'm just fucking with you. He didn't tell me, but that would be sick if I knew. <laughs> Dude, I was getting excited. To, I was going to end the fucking show. I was going to be like, we're done. We're done. I got I got to talk to Trev about something. See you guys. <laughs> we're out. Uh, you know what's funny? We were talking, and Chris is going to love this, man. C. Rose got a big shout out from the Kirsch, the Kirsch dog. Oh, he did? He's like, yeah, he's like, hey, like, you know, you're doing stuff with C. Rose now. I'm like, yeah, he's like, I love that guy. So shout out C. Rose, man. You're getting love from one of the best players to ever play this sport. Who doesn't you love stud. C. Rose? I love it. All right, uh, 9 o'clock Thursday night, Texas ranked number six versus TCU ranked number three. That's the premier matchup that kicks off college baseball. So everyone tune in, and we'll do a full recap later on. I don't want to get into other sports or other types of baseball. Can we please just get my sport back? What if all the MLB players go play in Mexico? It's allowed. I don't know what's going to happen, man. We talk about this all the time. I don't know what's going to happen, man. And I, you know what? I talked to a bunch of people over the weekend. Nobody knows what the hell is going to happen. And that is the scariest thing. Yeah. What are we going to do? Like, We got to do TPPs. Dude, here's my thing. Ah, uh, whatever. I know I don't want to come off too grumpy. Don't come off too grumpy. Let's be positive people. All right. Even you if, look like you want to be grumpy. I don't know if I believe this. I guess so. That's it's kind of like a thought. So I don't want to put it out there like a statement. Like, even if okay, they, yeah, because you're gonna, you know, it will be. Yeah, I know that. Whatever I say, the people will get that don't like me. will just say I'm terrible. Um, even if they don't miss any games, did they like lose fans and not gain any fans this off season? No, I don't think they have because honestly, we're in the thick of this. Yeah, like we're we're here. We're big baseball fans. So yeah, like the diehard fans are the ones that are really invested in what's going on now. Everybody else has been watching football. But now the the bright lights are going to be on baseball. But they didn't like, get yeah, they didn't, I guess because free agency was so cool. If if and, they and if the bookend, if they do announce it and then there's a wave of excitement, that might that might help out for it. I, everyone will be back. Look, they still have time to get this right. You know, we knew it was gonna be a fight. If we go through this whole thing and we miss, you know, a few games, I think we almost gotta be like applauding it. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. We can't miss like months though, because then no, I'm not applauding anything. Uh, I but to answer your question, if we get this deal done and there's no missed games, I think a lot of people will be like, "There was a lockout." When I talk to people that are just casual sports fans, a lot of them don't even know what is going on. And that's the truth, dude. So we, we're like, we can sneak around this baseball. We could, we could, you know show up with a deal and everyone be happy. You don't even know what went on during the off season. Yeah. We yeah. can still do that. All but right. The, like I said, that the, it's the focus is going to be on baseball now and the, the stories are going to get bigger because there's no football to talk about. Okay. So let's go, man. All right. I love it. Positive. I do think they just need to not miss games. Cause I, I think once they miss games, they miss a lot of games. And, and then I think they, it's hard to see a world where they just miss like two weeks of games and, we're kind of at this 
Same they just, total number. They just shouldn't be letting people inside. Like, there's, if there's one thing about sports, don't constantly remind people it's a business. Because that's the opposite of fandom. You know? <laughs> like, you just want to be a fairy tale fan. You just yeah. cheers and watches every night and not have that. I understand players and, and owners, it is a business, a huge business, and they have to protect themselves. But... Once that seeps in, it loses a little bit of its luster. That's like a sentiment. Like the only people really losing here are the fans. And I'm, I'm I kind of, uh, I agree with it. We, we have to take in to account what the fans want, how they're feeling, because it's, we're entertainment for the fans. Without the fans, there is no major league baseball. So we have to take into account that. Hmm. And like you yeah. said, there is the business aspect. It's a fine line, dude. It's really hard to toe this line. It really is. Um, yeah. But we, there's still a chance that we can come out of this and most of the world won't even know there are labor problems. They'll be like, what? I was watching football this whole time. Baseball's here. Sweet. That, I that's know. How it so is. They should have announced it today. We're back. Correa's going to the Blas. We're expanding Korea. to Tennessee. All right. We're later than I thought we were, and I got a call in 10 minutes, so I got to go. Thanks for Good tuning in, guys. Rams. Jake will be back, and we'll have some fun. Maybe we'll make everyone do a keeper league somehow of, like, the team. Maybe that's the thing, BBD. Maybe we can have an uh, audience call in and say, like, I'm a fan of the Blue Jays, and if I could only keep three players for the next two, se- three seasons, it would be these, and then we can, like... Once we get them, then we can build uh, something off of that. If we really have, you know, I don't want to. We can only do one labor pot episode a week. Unless there's like real. Updates. Unless there's real updates. And this was it. For I us. agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that. All right. That ends the episode. You guys are the best. Enjoy. Chat. Enjoy your day. Big Texas game coming up on Thursday. Matthew Stafford, you're a goat, baby. Hall of Fame. Here we come. Thanks for tuning in, Miranda. Jake sucks. Yes. <laughs> well, just in time to miss the entire show.